Oh, okay. She says she can see me now. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the August 14th meeting of the Rotary Club of Jamestown. I apologize. We were having some technical difficulties. Um, so welcome and let let's start by uh, singing the uh, let's start by saying the Pledge of the Allegiance and singing the national anthem and and saying the four way test. I pledge allegiance. Oh, I can't hear it either. <laughs> oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched so gallantly sleeping and the rocket's red glare the bomb bursting in air through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land and the whole brain. So repeating the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Very good. And so our invocation today is given by Rita Freeborough. Unfortunately, Paulette is under the weather. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace where there is hatred, love, where there is injury, pardon where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoning, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Thank you very much, Rita. Hello, hello. There it is. We'll get one speaker to work here. We'll get one. <laughs> Thank you, Paulette, for, for sending that on. And I hope you feel better quickly. So um, 
right now, President-elect Marion, have you got uh, visiting Rotarians or guests? No visiting Rotarians or guests? Anyone wanna? No. Welcome everybody. Glad to have you here. All right. And now get please get your tickets ready for Melissa Meyer for today's 50-50 drawing. $16, okay. One seven three nine. One seven three nine. Marion Beckering. Glenn says sixteen dollars for today. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So I don't see our sergeant at arms here today. I was so glad to see him last week. So um, does anybody? Have a happy buck for today. Here comes Dan. I just uh, <clears throat> last week had talked about everything that was going on in Shockwood County, and obviously that makes us all happy. So I wanted to uh, mention as well this past week, right here in town, two major events for the community. We had uh, the Jamestown Cruise in, excuse me, uh, organized through the Chamber of Commerce, which I'm sure Carrie will talk about in a little bit, but we had a great turnout downtown, great weather. And then obviously in the week, all through the weekend, Babe Ruth World Series as well. Lots of people around downtown. So just another great week. And that's my happy buck. Well, I have a happy buck because since the last time I saw you, I personally drove over 1,675 miles and I'm just glad to be back. I'm going to donate my winnings as my happy buck. Um, I had the pleasure of seeing my son perform at the Newport Jazz Festival this past Saturday, and he dedicated the set to uh, his late granddad. So it was a great day. I'm donating an unhappy buck. I have bees in my house, so I figure you guys should get some of the money. <laughs> I'll have to figure out a better way to do this here. So I am donating some happy bucks. I um, was fortunate enough to have my son come in for the week. So I'm putting in a buck for that. I'm putting in some happy bucks because our books finally arrived. So I'm putting in happy bucks for that. And I'm also putting in some happy bucks for the uh, Mike Roberts people at Allied Alarm who not only accepted delivery of our books at his warehouse, he then moved them all for us to the Rotary office so we didn't have to move them. So thank you, Mike, and your people. Just a quick happy buck. I know we're a small group today, but um, Annie Jr. will be at Little Theater uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the 24th, 5th, 6th, 7th of August. It's about a one hour show. Lots, like over a hundred children are going to be in these various shows over that four day period. There's two, I think there's six shows total. So um, show your support. It's um, very much the trying to move, move ahead with the legacy of both Lucy and Helen Merrill. And so it's being put on by Junior Gilders, which hasn't really found its new way forward um, since the pandemic and since those two women who carried that organization for years and years have stepped away. So um, showing your support is honoring their legacies. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. So, um, let's see. Announcements, somewhere I have announcements. Ha, huh, I got this out of order. Announcements. Um, 
As always, thank you. And today, uh, while Pickett is doing our Rotarily, thank you so much for doing that and for all the work the Communication Committee does. Thank you. Um, so the plans for August 21st uh, are shaping up. Uh, that's next Monday. We will not have a noon meeting. We'll meet at from five to seven at the Rotary office, which is um, is which is the uh, part of the Allied Alarm Complex. It's the building on the right. And uh, so we'll have a work session and then um, a social se session. So uh, it's BYOB and uh, we will provide some refreshments. Um, so we'll be stuffing the books uh, for the books and bibs pro program. And Melissa is going to tell us more about that. So stuffing these, um, the, the books is not going to be a, a big time consuming project. It's going to be very simple. We have a bag and into the, on that bag, we're going to put a sticker. So we need people to do that. Then we're going to have our Good Night Moon bilingual book. This needs a sticker on the inside of the book. I need one more hand. So we're gonna put, we're gonna be putting our rotary label here. So we need somebody to do that. Then we're gonna put the book into the bag. And we also have our little infant bib. So this also will need to go into the bag. So it's a matter of simply folding it and putting it in the bag. Then we also have a library application that will go in the bag and also a bookmark. So those will all go into the bag. So it's very, very simple. We're gonna assemble the bags and then put them in a box. And when we're done with that, we plan on about an hour. We're hoping we have a good turnout because each step you know, is a process. So we'll have it like lined up like an assembly line. And then starting at six o'clock, we're gonna have some pizza. The weather should be good. We'll have a table set up outside. People can have some pizza, bring your own beverage. And it'll be a good time, great time to talk to other Rotarians and network and socialize a little bit. Thank you, Melissa. So August 18th, that's this coming Friday at 8 a.m. is the Board of Directors meeting. And it's at uh, Chautauqua Region Community Foundation offices or by Zoom. Um, I wanted, oh, I wanted to announce that we're still looking for a fundraising committee chair. So if anyone is interested in that, we have chairs for our major fundraisers. So this is a, a support role for them. So, and I'm also passing around again this uh, week, the, uh, the list of committees and the committees that you're on. And we hope you will, if you didn't get a chance to do this last week, please look at this this week and, and make sure you're on the committees you want to be on. And that, um, and there's a couple of new committees. There's an engagement committee uh, to help get uh, more, more of our, our members actively involved. And there's an IT committee to help me do things like figure out why the national anthem wouldn't play. Um, and a, um, and then uh, Max Imiller, who is doing the winter fundraiser, uh, needs a committee to help him. So please think about those committees in addition to what we have been doing. Um, so how many of you went to Camp Anyasa on, on last night for the opening campfire? Was it a good fun? Yes, this is one of our big projects that we that we help uh, we provide major funding for this. So uh, I think it's really wonderful to see and hear and you'll you'll get hear more about it um, later. So um, let's see, are there any additional announcements by committee chairs? Okay, so we are continuing to pass around uh, the sign-up sheets as I already mentioned. A reminder that we are asking um, committees to think about actively and address three objectives. First is to advance, as I said earlier, the engagement of fellow Rotarians in your work. You know, reach out to people who maybe you haven't seen or you think might be interested and let's get them involved in your committee. 
uh, each committee to address each one uh, to address at least one of the avenues of club service, voc vocational, club, community, and international and youth. Think about it. I mean, we all sort of know we we provide those avenues of service, but think about it within your club and discuss it and see how you can best uh, address those avenues of service and then identify a way that your committee can uh, address the three areas of community service that we identified as uh, membership in the second survey, leadership development, student youth mentoring, and workforce development. Those were the items that the uh, club membership said were the most important community needs to address. So please think about how your committee can do that. Now I'd like to ask, we didn't, uh, last meeting, we were not able to have all the committee chairs talk about their committees. And I was gonna ask if there's any uh, committee chairs that want to uh, speak to, to what your committee does to encourage people to, to help with your committee. And I know that um, Sherry is, was online and was going to um, address the group. I'm ready for me if you are. Let me unmute you. Hang on a minute. Unmute Sherry. I can do this. Try again, Sherry. Can you hear me now? Yes, speak up, please. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Sherry Krull. I'm the Youth Services Chair, uh, past president from uh, a couple years ago. Anyways, um, our committee is a longstanding committee. And before I start, I want to say that I'm going to give you happy bucks because online because my children have been here since the 1st of August from all over the place. And so it's a nut house here. So I've missed meetings. I've not responded to emails. I apologize. Um, hopefully, after next week, I will be back in touch with everyone. So now that that's out of the way, um, our committee has been a longstanding committee. I wish I had the details to give you of how many students that we have sent abroad and how many students that we have received, but it's been a large number of them. It's a small committee. We don't have a lot of members and um, we can always use more. And I think it's, it's a, a committee that doesn't require a lot of hours necessarily, but there's an awful lot of benefit to connection with these kids. Um, currently, we have no outbounds from our club. As a matter of fact, youth services has suffered greatly because of the pandemic, and the United States section of our district only had one outbound student for this upcoming year, which is very sad. We only have seven kids coming in in the district overall, we were fortunate enough to um, be able to sponsor a student from another club, the Brantford Club, so that we will be receiving a student on Wednesday of this week. I'm going to be picking Joaquin Caparaz. I think that's how you say his last name. I'll be picking him up at the airport and dropping him at the Yaggy's house where he will begin his exchange. Um, he's also going to be staying with the Camas and with Kelly um, Martin, I think her last name is Kelly Martin now. So uh, at the end of the year. So we're excited to have him. Um, also, lots of times students that we have had go out or come back, re-engage with the club or go on to be involved in Rotary uh, uh, Future. We have several students that are currently involved in Rotary um, or Rotaract in other countries. Um, we also happen to have one of our students from a couple of years ago during the pandemic is coming back, I understand, for a little bit. And I just got the notification. So I think Anna is going to be in town for about a week or so. I don't have any dates yet. Um, but so keep your eyes open. Maybe, maybe you'll hear about that. Our committee is going to be actively interviewing outbound students for the next year. That would be the 2024-2025 exchange year. We usually start recruitment in September, so I'll need some help with some of that. We like to visit the schools and tell them a little bit about our program, and I have tons of information to share um, with that. If anybody wants to do one of those visits, join the committee and do that. Um, and then we will do live interviews probably in October of the students that apply, hopefully if we get some applicants. And then once we approve them, we pass them on to the district who then approves them and or train and then trains them for their outbound year. 
Um, it's a great program. I'm always happy to talk about it offline. You know, give me a call, drop me an email, whatever, if you would like more information. But we could definitely use more members to engage with. Um, while Joaquin is here, we'll want people maybe to drive him places or entertain him in other ways or show him parts of their life that they'd like to share and, and get something in return. So I, I think that's all I have to say. But certainly, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much, Sherry. And yes, the Exchange Committee can always use uh, more help. And it's just, it's a delightful committee to be on to, to meet these young people that are inbound or outbound. And I encourage people to, to participate. Okay. So um, at, uh, if there are no other announcements or committee chairs who want to talk about their committee, then I am glad to introduce our own member, Dan Heitzenrader, who will in, uh, introduce our speaker. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce our speaker, Carrie Swanson, who uh, works with us at the chamber. Uh, Carrie is a lifetime Chautauqua County resident, a recipient of a Rotary Scholarship, a uh, graduate of St. Bonaventure with a bachelor's in business administration and um, has been with the chamber for just about two years now. She's got a previous work experience in uh, various forms of customer service and um, management. So uh, we thought it would be a good time to pass along some updates around downtown programming specifically. Uh, so with downtown programming, the chamber over the past few years has been playing a uh, all term important coordinating role with some support from Carrie in her role with our organization with the Gebby Foundation and all of our partners across the Jamestown area that conduct programming and making a critical link between that and the business community and other organizations so Without saying too much more, I'm going to turn it right over to Carrie. We've got some handouts, so I apologize. I'll kind of go around as she starts talking and uh, welcome Carrie. We are happy to send these digitally afterward for the folks on Zoom. Sorry about that. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as Dan said, I'm really focused on um, downtown programming. It's part of my every day, literally every day. Um, he's going to be ha handing out some stuff. Um, again, I apologize to those online. I will send them out. Um, so one of the things that we started doing, it's been almost about a year and a half ago, um, is we created a calendar of events. Um, and that goes to all of our businesses downtown, um, as well as it's kind of expanded. So if you're a chamber member, you get a digital you get a digital copy as well every month. Um, and on that is every event that I know of, because there are always events that we miss. We don't mean to, but there are events we miss. Um, but every event that I know of, I focus on the upcoming month. You'll get it the week before um, the next month. So I will be working on um, September, which is crazy that we're already in September. Um, but we'll be starting September here in another two weeks. Um, and that will go out with September and on the back, October. And if there are any upcoming November events, that'll go on there as well. Um, you'll see this one that Dan's handing out has um, back to school on there because a lot of the businesses feel that's really helpful to them so that they know, hey, there isn't school this day or we might want to staff a little bit more. Um, that those are the big reasons why we started this. Also to encourage our businesses um, to extend hours if they feel like they can uh, maybe capitalize on some of the visitors downtown um, or offer any specials, which kind of leads me into one of the next things that are coming around. Um, I created back in, set these down. Um, I started this in June, so this is very new. Um, but when Pride Festival came around, there was a ton of businesses that were doing specials, and I knew there were a few that were open. It also was opening weekend of the Jamestown Public Market, which is, it's just a big, there's people everywhere. It's a great time downtown. So I created this kind of half sheet paper that, that I gave specifically to the public market. 
Um, and I highlighted if anybody was doing any specials for the weekend or if they were open extended hours, anything like that. Um, only made a couple copies, but um, it went over really well. So I continued <laughs> um, and I did one for the Scandinavian festival, which I do not have that one with me. Um, and then I kind of shifted it um, for Babe Ruth this weekend. Um, and this one's kind of unique because I extended it out. So it's not just downtown Jamestown, but it's also um, focused kind of around Dietrich Park because that's where they are most of the time. Um, and then a lot of the businesses, which this is not all of them because I had a few extras that added at the last minute, um, but a lot of the businesses offered a special. Um, so I put that on the back so that our visiting families um, from all over the place could see, hey, I need to go to the, the Comedy Center or Pearl City Clayhouse um, or RTPI. All of those locations have something special um, if they wear their badge or their jersey, one or the other. Um, and then also, just kind of a side note, another addition. Um, this started kind of before these, but they, it's tied in really well. Our Pearl City Hospitality Program, um, we started this back in, this was April, May when I officially launched it and it got it out and about. Um, that is this beautiful little, little QR code here. Um, these you should see in most every business downtown. Um, the QR code takes visitors to a Google map that will help guide them around to different businesses. Um, they also at the bottom have jtny.events, which if you've never been there, please check it out. Probably today it still has cruising up, but it will switch to um, Babe Ruth World Series probably by the end of the day. Um, and that has any events that are going on downtown um, that again, we know about. Uh, if if um, organizations submit posters, which they can submit posters to me directly, um, they will, I, I'm happy to put those on that page as well. Um, it's just a really great tool that kind of brings everything together. And again, then you can kind of see if you're hungry and you want to go get some dinner Well, after you're at an event, where can I go? So you can scan um, Pearl City Hospitality and it'll take you right there. And I talk really fast. So thank you for listening to me. <laughs> okay, awesome. Sorry. So Tori asked how it goes if I go to approach a business that's not open on a Monday and maybe there's an event happening. Um, so typically I remind them that there's an event coming up on a specific date, um, especially Mondays. Mondays are pretty light around downtown um, or Tuesday. Tuesdays are light too. Um, and I really try to encourage them that to consider maybe having extended hours for just that week if there's an event going on. Sometimes it goes really well. Sometimes it's a, that's my only day I have to get items done or whatever, which I understand. Um, I try to encourage them if they're not going to be open on that, that particular day, whatever it might be, that maybe they run a special the other days to try to encourage those folks to come back. Um, again, it, it's really up to the business owners, but, but, I, but I try really hard to encourage them to be open. Mm -hmm. she asked if if she wanted to go to fringe if she had to scan to find out or any of them so you don't have to scan to find where they are i don't have the the addresses on those sheets just because space is limited and i wanted people to be able to read it um you it is a great way to find where folks are um they most of the businesses, especially on like the Pride and the Scandinavian Fest are downtown specific. Um, the, the Babe Ruth World Series has expanded out a little bit. Um, I actually am gonna be honest because Fringe is not a member, but that's okay. I don't know if they are on my map. No, you made me think though. <laughs> yeah, no, you can scan to find out where they're at. Um, or we also have it at the, 
Visitor Information Center. Um, I have a map that uh, JRC put together, which I don't want to talk too much about that, but I have that as well, which has all of the downtown businesses. Right. So if they scan that, it will bring up their address, their phone number, and the Google map. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. How much notice do you need to get added to the list? Yeah. Um, so I do typically um, that last week of whatever month it is, is when I'm putting it together. Um, we have an events coalition meeting, which we're actually having tomorrow instead of Thursday because we have our golf tournament Thursday. Um, but uh, our events coalition meeting, all of the organizations and everybody gets together. Um, it's typically the third Thursday. I ask folks to get it to me at least by like the 25th. Um, I'm, I'm happy to add it after, but if my initial print has already been done, I'm not going to print more. I just let the businesses know and I'll try to highlight it. Um, when I go around to talk to everybody, I usually stand there and say, hey, this weekend, this weekend, this weekend, you're going to have a lot of people downtown. So get ready. <laughs> but yeah, as long as I have it about five days before the end of the month. You're welcome. Any questions? Oh, Dan. Absolutely. So Dan just asked with the, the festivals and the events going on downtown, the ones that I called out all the different um, businesses, how to how does it expanded? Um, so initially, um, it started as um, just the public market, like I mentioned. Um, and then it kind of expanded to the Scandinavian festival. I gave some to the public market and I gave some to them that they had at their, at their registration table. Um, and then for Lucy Fest, I took them everywhere. I think, um, they were in every business. Um, I gave them to their, um, to their information tables, both at the Lucille ball, uh, at the, museum and over at the comedy center so they both had them um, and then Babe Ruth World Series we actually printed enough for each of the families that are coming in that they could have them um, again I do e I email these all out to the businesses as well so that they're aware hey if I mess something up please tell me um, <laughs> because that happens I'm human <laughs> um, but it is it is something that's really kind of expanded and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger um, I know I'm planning on doing it through, um, and I'm just thinking of the next really big, big, big event downtown, which is probably the, uh, oh my gosh, the holiday parade. Um, and I'm planning on doing that as well, um, giving it out to all the businesses. They already know when it is. Everyone kind of knows that, but just kind of expanding it so that they're aware as well. So it's not just somebody comes in and say, hey, I found this. They know what it looks like. that would be a great thing to look into yeah yeah yes definitely thank you Kathy did you Kathy did you have a question Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Glad to hear. Uh, it's wonderful that the that the chamber is doing so much to get the word out. 
and uh, I know for a while, <laughs> I actually I actually overheard a local businessman talking about uh, all the events that were happening and how he was going to uh, be welcoming people. And I walked up to him and I said, "Thank you so much. It is so important that we're open and available when when the people come through and that and that our downtown businesses are aware." So I really appreciate also appreciate everything that the that the uh, chamber is doing there. Thank you so much. So if there are, are no other announcements, what we do, yeah, what we do for every speaker, we uh, Rotary is working to alleviate polio in the world. And for each speaker, we make a donation to the Rotary Foundation that will uh, allow for immunization of 10 children who will never experience polio in their lives. Thank you very much. And if there are no other other announcements, oh, now that I've moved the we are adjourned. <laughs>